one of Neil's favorite experiments, and mine, is dropping red-hot charcoal into liquid oxygen in a cauldron, a bowl. You've seen it before, but now we're going to show it to you like you've never seen it. We're going to show you how we do the experiment from the very beginning, and we're going to show it to you with a thermal imaging camera so you can see which bits get hot, which bits get cold, and even see some of the temperatures. The first thing is that you have to fetch some liquid nitrogen from the tank. It's usually a bit of a chore, but when you look at the temperatures, it's really quite interesting. Once Neil did that, he had to carry the dewars back to his lab where we're going to make the liquid oxygen. Now liquid oxygen has a higher boiling point than liquid nitrogen. And so you can condense liquid oxygen using liquid nitrogen because it's colder. So you begin with a cylinder that's a high pressure bottle of oxygen. Now the pressure of the gas is far too high to use for the experiment. So you have to reduce the pressure with a so-called regulator, which sits on the top of the cylinder. Once you've got it flowing, you flow it through a coil of copper. Copper conducts heat very well. So if you put the coil of copper in the liquid nitrogen and flow the oxygen through, it will liquefy. But because there's a flow, it goes right through and doesn't solidify in the coil. So the gas comes out of the cylinder at a low pressure, but flowing quite fast. It flows down a tube into the copper coil, which is cold. In the coil, it liquefies. And when it liquefies, the flowing gas blows through probably droplets or slugs of liquid out of the other side and then it's fast enough so that it doesn't all boil away when it goes through the last piece of tube and then it goes into a thermos flask. We didn't have much oxygen and because once it's in the bowl it will boil away quite quickly it was important to get the hot charcoal ready first because the charcoal will gently burn in air, so once it's hot, it will stay hot for quite a long time. So Neil heated the charcoal, really like lighting a barbecue. Now remember, we only have one thermos of liquid oxygen, and as soon as you pour something cold into the bowl, which starts at room temperature, a lot of it will boil away. So Neil didn't want to waste the oxygen, so he cooled the bowl, pre-cooled it, with liquid nitrogen, because it has far more liquid nitrogen than oxygen. The bowl's made of metal, so it cools quite quickly, because it doesn't have a very high heat capacity. Once the bowl is cold, when he pours in the liquid oxygen, it will still boil a little bit, but it won't boil very violently, so we won't waste much. So in goes the liquid oxygen into the pre-cooled metal bowl. Neil was ready. He had a container with several pieces of hot charcoal. Now, obviously, when you drop them in, you have charcoal, which is carbon, which is going to burn really brightly in the presence of oxygen. When it's dropped in, the ordinary video camera completely whites out. Looks really good. Looks as if the whole world has ended. But the thermal imaging camera looks 
very much more selective wavelengths so you can actually see what's happening to the piece of charcoal. Not only can you see, but you can measure its temperature. So you have two really good bits of scientific information. There was a really interesting thing that happened. One of the pieces that Neil dropped in went the usual flash of light, and nobody knew what was happening. But Brady, who was looking through the thermal imaging camera, said, it's broken in two. And then when things had subsided, what has happened? You could see, in fact, two pieces of charcoal. It's important to stress, the liquid oxygen is very cold. The charcoal is very hot. It's somewhere between 900 and 1,000 degrees centigrade. And so the way that these two can coexist, something that's very hot and something that's very cold, is that the charcoal is probably surrounded by a bubble of gas. Now, you can't see that hot gas because it's probably not radiating in the same way as the charcoal. But you do need to remember you can't have a liquid at minus nearly 200 degrees centigrade in contact with the surface that's at 1,000 degrees centigrade. So the charcoal is surrounded by a cushion of air, except it's round, so it's more like a bubble. And that's important because, of course, the oxygen gas gets much more efficiently to the surface to maintain the burning. Eventually, the reaction slows down and the oxygen rushes in and cools down the remaining fragments of charcoal. So probably when Neil washed it out, he found some small pieces of charcoal at the bottom. We thank Google's Making and Science Initiative for helping us make this video. If you want more information about the initiative, look down in the video description.